Good morning, beloveds. Foster is just perched up on, on my uh, thigh here with just a, just a little bit of a purr. I don't know if he'll make a K-meow. So, um, and I read the title today and went, that sounds like an Ernest Holmes uh, title. Uh, I held fast and I turned, my alarm was set for 7.30 and I still woke up at 6.30 and then just rolled over and went back to sleep. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking the week off from exercising. Oh, okay. It helped that it's wet and cold out there. So, you know, I was just like, I'm not getting out in that. All right. It is December 20th. Our title is good multiplies in my experience. Ernest Holmes title, right? Uh, the first quote is, but who, who so looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein? Being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this person shall be blessed in their deed. And that is James one twenty five. The second quote is, God was not created in the past, nor is it an, to be annihilated in the future. It is eternal, permanent, absolute, and from all eternity. Eternity, it sufficiently embraces its essence in, in its essence, all possible merits. Buddhism. G, uh, James tells us that we should look to the perfect law of liberty and by following its precepts, we shall be blessed in our deeds. This means to keep the eye single or centered on spirit which is eternal and embraces all good. We often wonder why we are so limited and too frequently project the blame for our limitations upon the will of God. This is a psychological trick which we play in ignorance of the true facts. Limitation is not imposed upon us by God, but through our own ignorance of the great freedom that God has bestowed upon people. We are privileged by our creator to become co-creators in our personal affairs, no greater, no greater freedom could be given than the freedom each has in experiencing their true nature in increasing measure. Daily, we should open our consciousness to the divine influx, expecting greater wisdom and guidance and complete self-expression. I bless everything and know that the good multiplies in my experience as I lift up my consciousness to receive it. I turn my thought Godward and accept the wholeness and the abundance and the joy of the eternal spirit. I daily experience its perfect fulfillment. E.H. Ernest Holmes. Um, I'm reminded of a, a and, and I've seen it half you know, frequently throughout my life. And it's like, those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those doing it. Uh, one of my favorite times that I ever saw that it was, po uh, it was posted on a picture of a man standing on the edge of a basket. It was a wide basket and a very narrow edge. And he's standing on the edge of the basket. And I'm just like, it looks impossible. And yet there's photographic evidence that he's doing it. So, uh, frequently, uh, and, and, and it's just like, you know, when I was running track in high school, um, I think this was before somebody broke the four minute mile and, and people keep saying, and, and if you go back and look at track records over the, you know, this will never happen. This will never happen. This will never happen. And then somebody does it. Um, you know, that the, God bless the first woman that ran the, I think it was the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon, you know, um, because, and, and you know, the, the silly little things like they didn't think that women should ride on trains because the speeds would make the uterus fly out of the body. I mean, we're really good at limiting ourselves and we're really good at limiting each other. I mean, how many times growing up has somebody looked at you and said, well, you can't do that. I mean, I'm a girl, <laughs> you know, well, I'm a full grown woman now, but you know, so many times growing up, 
people would look at me and say, well, you can't do that. You're a girl. And my response was almost always, watch me. Which, if you want to know, a large part of my personality, there it is right there. Because people would say, well, you can't do that because you're a girl. And I'm like, watch me. Watch me. You know, I didn't take that. I was like, what has a being a girl got to do with my ability to do whatever this is? You know, it's like, watch me. Watch me. Let me prove you, you know, let me prove you wrong. And even if you don't watch me, even if you have, you know, have no interest in it, I'm going to go do it just to prove to myself that I can do it. I grew up in, frankly, Southern Baptist country, and I grew up Catholic, at which point both of those faiths would look at me and go, well, you're a girl. You can't be a minister. Well, you know what? They were wrong. <laughs> Watch me, watch me. Here I am. Um, and so it, it, anytime somebody says you can't do that, including yourself, then you want to come back to, well, why not? You know, and most of the time it'll come back to fear. It'll come back to fear, uh, either their own fear or if if it's you, your own fear. It's like, and and at which point that I'm going to remind you, uh, I, I I love I love this one. It's like be willing to suck at something new. Okay, a master has failed more time than more times than an apprentice has ever tried. Be willing to suck at something new. When you start a new whatever it is, you're not necessarily going to be good. I will honestly tell you. I had three classes with um, uh, Dr. Roger Teal, Dr. Reverend Doctor. I never know where to put the Reverend and where to put the Doctor when we're dealing with uh, science of mind ministers. Uh, but Roger Teal, who was the senior minister of Mile High for a very long time. And I had him for homiletics too, which is, you know, speech class. And the very first class, he told me I was boring. And it hurt. But he was right. I was boring. <laughs> I did not do that speech well at all because I was scared because I was scared because I was facing this man who I didn't know. Um, I, you know, I had classmates that I didn't know that well because I got homiletics early. I think I was my second year in when I got homiletics, not my fourth year. So, you know, it was like Patrick was um, a senior and getting ready to graduate. And so he was, you know, full in and I'm like, a, a sophomore and I'm like wait what so but that's what he he said you're boring and it hurt but he was right why was I boring because I was scared and yet I still had two more classes now I don't remember the second class I don't I don't remember what happened in the second class so um or it could have been in the second class that he told me I was boring I don't remember it was one of the two um so but I wrote several, because that's what you do in homiletics. You write several talks and I got good feedback so I can write a good talk. And then um, they took us into the old um, mile high, not the, not the new great big, because that would have been terribly intimidating. Um, but the old one to do our last speech our, for our last class. And by whatever grace, whatever grace, uh, I got drawn first. I got to go first. Now, going first is probably, going first and last are probably th the most terrifying places to go. But I was like, okay, you have nobody to compare me to. <laughs> and I get to set the bar. You get to compare everybody else to me. And that's the way I think. So, you know, I was like, I get to go first. I'm super excited about this. Um, and so I did my talk. And I came in under time. I think I had 18 minutes. And he, what he said, he said two things to me that I will, that I will never forget. Um, one, when he came, when I met him down off the stage, came down off the stage and I got feedback from my classmates. So, you know, it wasn't just him, but he said, well, you're just naturally funny. You're never going to need canned humor. Boom. Right there. First time he tells me I'm boring. This time he tells me I'm naturally funny. And then he says, and you also touched my heart. And I went, 
I don't remember anything else he said. I'm sure he gave me feedback about the way I stood and what have you and all that other stuff. But I said those two things. So it's like I could have taken that first time when he told me I was boring and just immediately limited myself and say, well, I'll never be good at this because Dr. Reverend Roger Teal thinks I'm boring. But I was like, nope. And I will tell you when I got up to do that last speech for the class, I was terrified. I was terrified. Um, you know, I had gone down to the exercise room in the hotel and practiced it and cried. Cr absolutely cried while I was on that treadmill practicing my speech. But I did it. And I, and you can see how tightly I hold those two compliments. Um, and how I haven't forgotten what he said the first time. We limit ourselves. We limit ourselves. God does not limit us. But we limit ourselves. We will take what people say to us and limit ourselves. And what we need to do is give ourselves the grace to try again. Give ourselves the grace and whatever it is. We're not going to be fantastic at everything. That's just the way it is. But if we really want to do something, even if we're bad at it, if it feeds our soul, then we should do it anyway. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, but occasionally I doodle, okay? Because it feeds my soul. Do I show them to anybody? No. <laughs> but I don't limit myself out of fear because I know the back of me. I have an eternal support and that the good is going to be multiplied in my life, whether I'm good at it or not. All right. God will never limit us and we will never know the heights that we could rise to unless we are willing to fall. Unless we are willing to fall. And the cool thing about falling is I'm going to remind you of the Emerson quote, which did come from the Bible, by the way. The everlasting arms beneath us. So even if we fall, we're not going to crash and burn. Because God will always catch us. And maybe we won't be good at it. But we'll have tried. And which reminds me of the quote, Shoot for the moon. Because even if you miss the moon, you'll land among the stars. All right? So let good be multiplied in your experience. Don't let fear limit you. All right. I went a completely different way than I thought I was going to go. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, that's just my story for today. And the mission today, should you choose to accept it, I would say I would go with this one. I turn my, uh, turn whatever it is that you are facing, whatever it is that you are facing. Um, turn your thoughts Godward and accept the wholeness and abundance and joy of the eternal spirit. Know that whatever it is that you are trying, the everlasting arms are always going to catch you. Always going to catch you. So, that's, that's my, that's my story for you today. Um, the ever, the everlasting arms. <laughs> Turn your thoughts Godward. No matter what it is that you are going to attempt, you are going to try, you are going to try out for the first time. Turn your thoughts Godward and let that good be multiplied in your experience. Because sometimes it's just the attempt that's enough. All right. Yeah. All right. That was kind of intense. All right, beloveds. Um, you have your mission. And here's where I get to do the other part where I remind you to do something to, uh, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. And sometimes what it looks like is when you fail to pick yourself up and try again. And sometimes when you fail to pick yourself up and try something new. All right. The definition of insanity is, uh, you know, trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You got to tweak it. So 
Uh, and the, sometimes the most loving, kind, and compassionate thing you can do for yourself is to try again. And again, sometimes, it's to try something new. Uh, let that good be multiplied. Give yourself the experience. Be afraid and do it anyway. It's the definition of courage. Try it. But it also looks like taking a nap, taking a day off. It looks like taking a deep breath before you speak. It looks like self-care. It also looks like joy. Um, we, it is December 20th. We have a, a one day until, or we, we, you know, we're in the home stretch for the Christmas season. I'm not sure if today's the longest day or, or longest night or tomorrow. Um, cause I never remember if it's actually the 20th into the 21st or the 21st into the 22nd, or if it changes, I don't know. Um, and I should know. No, I shouldn't. I'm not going to shut on myself about that. Um, so light your candles tonight and light them tomorrow night and hold on to that good for you. All right. I'm just all kinds of discombobulated. There he is. There he is. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days, I'd like you to see his bright green eyes because he's precious. He is precious. And I am getting distracted by the cat. So, uh, Loving, kind, compassionate. Practice on yourself. You are your best test subject. Um, I will also tell you to make room for joy. It is both about self-care and making joy, making time for joy, making space for joy. Uh, but it is also about practicing on yourself because you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. Absolutely. It is about connecting with the source of your own being and, and, and understanding that you are connecting to an infinite source of love, kindness, and compassion. So that you have plenty for yourself. You are creating a first response. So that no matter what happens, because we all fail occasionally, that you, when you do, um, you do it with love, with kindness, with compassion. You don't beat yourself up about it. You know, um, that you move on and either try something new or try again. Uh, so there's more to that. And I'm, you have heard this from me many times. So I'm just going to move on into, uh, do something to engage your mind and your body, unless this is your day of rest, or in my case, I'm taking a week of rest. Do please do drink plenty of water. Uh, and especially as the cold moves in, uh, hydration is super important and we can get very dehydrated in the colder weather because we don't want to drink cold water. Um, so, you know, warm it up room temperature. Please hydrate. Your brain works better when you're hydrated. Uh, I do encourage you to get early in your day bright light. Uh, <laughs> today, I hadn't quite got out. I start, I ease myself gradually into the bright light. But I get to it fairly early. Not this morning. This morning, we flipped on the light and I was like, I'm laying there going, Whoop, that light's very bright, but I'm wide awake now. <laughs> so, um... It's about circadian rhythms. It is about hormonal balance. And when... You do that early in your day, bright light, it does reset hormones. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. Trust me. It's science. You can look it up. Uh, and then, as always, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. All right? Because it's a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. And once you figure that out, any place can become heaven. Any place can become heaven. And once you figure it out, other people around you start to notice, hey, what does he know or she know or they know that I don't know? And I want a piece of that because, uh, yeah. And that's how we create a world that works for everybody. Uh, science of mind is not a pro 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 prophesizing religion. What we do is we we looked at Jesus and we went, he's a very good example. Let's live our lives like that. And that's what we want to be. We want to be good examples. We want people to see us living our lives and how happy we are. And we want to show them how, but we want them to come to us and go, what do you know that I don't know? We're not going to force it on anybody. It's my favorite thing. One of my favorite things. I say that a lot. It's one of my favorite things about science of mind. It's like, we want to be a great example. We're not going to force our, force ourselves on you. All right. Um, and you can always take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. Okay. Um, gratitude will get you everywhere. 
So here's the social media part. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I do thoroughly encourage you to um, check all that stuff out. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the weather is changing and my brain is going, no. Um, yeah. Social media. Creative Life Spark, Creative Life Spiritual Center, The Running Rev Ryan. Uh, you want to know what's going on with the center? Email info at creativelife.org. We have an amazing Yule Circle. No, the Yule Circle was last Sunday. Christmas Eve is going to be really cool. And then we will have a Christmas Day service. So, you know, you can catch us Saturday night and Sunday. And we will be online or live in person. Your choice. Uh, all right. So have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a try something new day, a give it another go day, a get stuff done day, a it's almost Christmas day. Um, and enjoy, go enjoy the lights day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and well represented always and forever. All right. You are a bright light. You are a brilliant divine spark. You are a godling. Take care of yourself. All right. Know who you are. Um, so Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. ish tomorrow. Uh, Know that you're loved, and I will see you next time.